everyone, and welcome to another math tutorial. In this video, we continue our discussion on the chain rule derivatives in calculus, and we're gonna do some chain rule examples with radical functions. Now, these are essentially just gonna be power chain rule problems like I showed a couple videos ago. However, the complexity of doing um, the powers with rational numbers coming from the radicals themselves kind of uh, adds a little layer of complexity and difficulty to this. So I wanted to put some problems together in their own video. All right, with that, let's take a look at the first example problem. Okay, the first example, we have y equals the square root of 4x minus three. Uh, I wanna take the derivative of this. It is going to require chain rule. And you know what I just said on the title slide is these are essentially power chain. You might be asking, well, where's the power, right? Well, the very first thing you should do, and you're probably aware of this, with any radical function, square root, cube root, whatever kind of radical you have, is you want to rewrite as a power first. So before you do any calculus, the first step is just to rewrite this function. So this is gonna become y equals the quantity 4x minus three. And we should all know that a square root is a one half power. So that's step one, zero calculus, just a little bit of algebra rewrite. After I've done that step, now it's pretty clear, hopefully like we've seen in other videos, that the 4x minus three is the inner piece and the one half is the outer. Um, so, and this is just a power. So this is simply like a power chain. We're gonna do this like we saw in some other problems. The only difference is, is that the power is a rational number. Uh, it's a fraction, so we're gonna have to deal with that. We're gonna see some negative exponents come into play, so depending on your comfort level with that uh, might dictate kind of how easy this is. So let's go ahead and get started. Uh, the derivative, power rule first, so one half out in front. Now we gotta subtract one from the power, so if you take away one from one half, you get negative one half. And now we're gonna do the chain rule part, which is the derivative of the inside. Derivative of four X minus three is four. Now, these two numbers can go ahead and multiply together. So let's go ahead and do that. So we have Y prime equals, and I'm just gonna put the product of those two numbers in the front. So we're gonna have two times the quantity four X minus three to the negative one half. Now, some instructors, some texts are okay if you leave exponents as a negative. Um, so if your instructor says it's fine, like this might just be finished for you, okay? Um, but I wanna take it to a, a different place. I like to make negative exponents positive. Uh, so I might rewrite this as two over quantity 4x minus three to the positive one half power. Um, so I think that's a little bit better, that's just me. Some instructors might even be a little bit more picky, a little bit more specific. If the problem started in radical form, uh, if we can, we can put it back into radical form for our answer. You know, so maybe we take this one more step and we say y prime is equal to two over the square root of four x minus three. Now I think any of these forms of the derivative are honestly just fine. Um, you know, and depending, and once you get a little more experience uh, in calculus, it, it might kind of help you out as to where to stop. You know, if I was gonna go and get a second derivative I'd wanna leave it right here, because this is already in the form I want to just take another derivative. If I was trying to find a, a tangent line or if I needed to evaluate the derivative in some way, you know, I might skip some of this algebra rewrite and just plug in numbers right here. You know, so depending on what you want from the derivative might dictate kind of where you go 
um, with the simplification of that answer. All right, let's take a look at another problem. Okay, here we have y equals the cube root of 5x plus 1. Again, very first step, rewrite this. I'm going to rewrite it as 5x plus 1, a cube root is a one-third power. Okay, so I'm always going to do that rewrite step first, and then I'm going to go ahead and do the derivative. I'm going to go ahead and do the, the chain rule now on that. Let's see, my y prime, I'm going to bring the one-third out to the front. Keep the inside. Uh, See, so take one off the power, so uh, one-third minus one is negative two-thirds. And now we're going to multiply that by the derivative of 5x plus 1, which is 5. Uh, okay, I am going to go ahead and multiply these two factors together. So y prime is equal to 5 thirds times quantity 5x plus 1 to the negative 2 thirds power. Uh, again, like I explained in the last slide, the last example, uh, you're going to now just kind of rewrite this to the point where you're happy with how it looks simplified. Uh, I typically uh, just, you know, one detail, I just like the exponents to be positive in my final answer. So I'm going to go ahead and fix that. Uh, so y prime is equal to, and, and to fix that, I'm going to bring it down to the denominator with this 3. So let's go ahead and make this kind of a, a, a big fraction. There's the 5, there's the 3, so there's my 5 thirds. We're going to put 5x plus 1. Now it's positive 2 thirds power in the denominator. I would consider that to be finished. Okay, one final example problem. Uh, another one where we've got a radical uh, here that we're going to have to rewrite. I wanted to show you one though where we've got a problem set up as a quotient, right? We've got a fraction top and bottom. I see a lot of students make the mistake of every time they see a quotient just running quotient rule. And you don't need to do quotient rule uh, particularly if the, the numerator is just a constant because the derivative of that constant is zero. Uh, so you know, doing quotient rule kind of adds more work than you need to do. Uh, but, but typically, I like to just rewrite everything as a product anyway. But this particular problem, again, because that 7 is just a constant, we're not really going to need to do product rule either. But we are going to have to rewrite this. So let's just start there. I'm going to rewrite it in two steps just so you can see everything that's happening. The first step, I'm going to rewrite that radical as a 1 half power. Now again, it's still written as a quotient, and I'm not about doing quotient rule on this problem. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take this denominator that has the exponent, I'm going to move the whole thing up top and change that to a negative power. So this is going to be 7 times the quantity 2x plus 9 to the negative half power. And now we have an opportunity to use a power chain rule on this function. We're going to do uh, the power rule first, and then the 2x plus 9 is the inner function. The 7, we're not worrying about that because it's not, it doesn't have a, a variable, it's just a constant. So when that power comes out, it just multiplies that 7. Uh, so I'm not going to do a power rule in this particular problem. Or not power, product rule, sorry. Okay, here we go. Let's take the derivative of this form of our function. So the power comes out in front, it multiplies to the 7. So we have negative 7 halves. The inside stays as it is. And when we subtract 1 from this power, it gets us to negative 3 halves. Now we're going to multiply that by the derivative of the inside. So 2x plus 9's derivative is 2. I am going to go ahead and multiply these together. So that's going to give me y prime equals negative 7 times the quantity 2x plus 9 to the negative 3 halves power. I am going to finish this by just fixing the negative power. So y prime is going to be negative 7 and then the denominator will have quantity 2x plus 9 to the positive 3 halves power. And of course, that's the same 
as so you can take that negative and just pull it to the front of the fraction. So don't forget you can see it like that too. I think it's important to be able to look at your answer and know what other answers it's equivalent to, right? Because if you're checking answers with uh, answer keys and text uh, or online, that sort of thing, sometimes the answers that you see, uh, right? Like maybe you look in a textbook and you see this answer, but you worked out the problem and have this answer, it's important to know that these two answers are exactly the same thing and where you put that negative doesn't matter. So, so, so that's it. If you found this video helpful, uh, please give the video a thumbs up. If you have any questions or comments, you, maybe you have an, a, a problem that you're not sure how to work out and you need some, some support or some help, please leave those in the comment section below. I thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next one.